Is graphite the next lithium? I was reading an interesting article the other day that posed this question. It's quite a fascinating title to consider and ponder. We all know that the electric vehicle adoption is beginning to really play out. It's rapidly facilitating demand for electric vehicles, but also all of the raw materials that will have to facilitate this transition. We all know about the excitement surrounding the lithium sector. Lithium prices have continued to soar to record highs on the back of demand. And so, I thought it would be worth us exploring graphite, doing a deep dive into the graphite sector, talking about what is graphite, what are its use cases, how does it help to get involved and develop lithium ion batteries, and then most importantly, what are the supply and demand dynamics and what could we expect moving forward for the graphite sector. It's a fascinating time, the electric vehicle transition is attracting a lot of attention, and I'm looking forward to unpacking this story with you all. Drop in a comment, let us know what you think about it all, park up, enjoy a cup of tea or a coffee, and let's get into it. So to understand it initially, what is graphite? Graphite is a black mineral crystalline form of the element carbon, arranged in a hexagonal structure. Graphite has a number of unique properties of both a metal and a non-metal, even though graphite is a non-metal. A couple of these interesting properties to reflect on. It's flexible but not elastic. It has refractory qualities, which is going to be interesting when we talk about use cases. It's chemically inert or non-reactive, and it has a high thermal and electrical conductivity, which is definitely going to be important as we discuss the electric vehicle revolution and its use in lithium-ion batteries later on in the video. And so with that contextual backdrop, it makes sense for us to start to understand how is graphite currently used? What are the use cases? Maybe you think that graphite's only used in the battery anodes and it's only 100% in the EVs, but actually that's not the reality. There is a wide range of use cases for graphite. In its current form, it's actually predominantly on the industrial side, from pencils to lubricants, foundry facings and battery production. The largest use case for graphite currently is for refractory materials, but it is worth noting and understanding, as I'm sure intuitively most people would guess, that the electric vehicle battery material space, with its use as an anode, is forecast to be the fastest growing segment. The use case that we'll be focusing in today's discussion, of course, will be for graphite's use as the anode in the lithium ion batteries. Graphite is a good electrical conductor, as we talked about. It's got a relatively lengthy life cycle as well, which is important. It means it's a great solution to serve as the anode, which is the negative electrode within lithium ion batteries. And this helps to fuel the electric vehicles that are obviously going to help to electrify transport around the world. As we know, there are a range of different battery compositions with different cathode chemistries and weightings being developed and refined over time by different manufacturers globally. However, graphite is quite unique because at the current time, it doesn't have any commercial scale substitutes with its use as an anode, which really does set it apart. It's also fascinating to reflect on the fact that lithium ion batteries, I know lithium gets a lot of the focus when discussing the electric vehicle transition, but lithium ion batteries actually require more graphite than lithium by weight potentially 10 times or more depending on the vehicle. And you might have heard Elon Musk state that lithium ion batteries could well be called nickel graphite batteries because of the significant amount of the commodities that they use. There is up to 50 to 100 kilograms of graphite in your standard electric vehicles. And it is worth noting that graphite makes up between 5 to 15% in and around that 10% mark of the cost of the lithium ion battery. So it is a significant component of that. And so then progressing on to the supply and demand discussion. It is worth noting that there is no spot or futures market for graphite. Obviously, this makes it a relatively more opaque market and it makes it a little bit more difficult for visibility on pricing. This is obviously amplified by the fact that there's a huge variance in terms of scale of size as well as in grade and transactions traditionally are done through direct contracts between buyers and sellers. This visual here is an interesting one, however, in terms of the demand discussion. It's from a recent Renascore presentation, and I think it provides a pretty fascinating insight into the anode demand forecast over time. Obviously, as we've mentioned, due to the fact that graphite anodes at the moment is the significant majority of use cases within lithium ion batteries, and that the vast majority of anodes are made out of graphite, this visual here obviously has a correlation towards the electric vehicle demand, but it is worth noting that there are new technologies being developed over time. Obviously, none of them have reached commercial scale yet. It's going to be fascinating, however, as they do come down the cost curve and as new technologies are developed, how that demand dynamic plays out for graphite's use within the anode itself. And so then switching over to the supply side, it's worth noting that the graphite market is significantly concentrated at the moment. Depending on the numbers you're looking at, China accounts for around three quarters of global graphite supply. And downstream processing of the anode material is significantly focused and concentrated within Asia with China, of course, but then Japan and South Korea as well being key players. 
We all understand the demand-driven story. There's plenty of demand coming online. Giga factories seem to be popping up almost every week now. We saw Tesla bring online Giga Berlin as well as their new Giga factory in Texas just recently. And of course, as we know, as new Giga factories come online, as new battery manufacturers develop out their supply chains, they're gonna need more raw materials to help to facilitate this transition. So this is gonna be very interesting. I think building on top of that as well, we know that nations, regions around the world, they're focusing on building out and localizing supply chains. This will help to develop supply chain resilience. And with graphite being highlighted as a critical mineral by many different nations around the world, this is only gonna amplify the importance in terms of localized supply chains for graphite as the electric vehicle transition does start to pick up pace. With many forecasters anticipating that graphite, like many other commodities, potentially will go into a supply deficit throughout this next decade into the 2020s. Of course, different forecasters have got different timelines that they have for this. But supply projects can't seem to come online fast enough yet to cope with the significant amount of uplift in demand that we're seeing. And so when considering the graphite market, I do think that there are a range of considerations that are worth thinking about. Of course, there's a natural versus synthetic discussion. There's talk about different types of substitutions or alternative technologies. But before we unpack those, firstly, if you've enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit the like button. Feel free to share it out. We make a daily video each and every day too. So make sure you've subscribed and turn your bell notifications on. So I guess that substitution discussion is the first and foremost. Many people are familiar with the discussions around silicon. Of course, we hear solid state batteries often touted. As mentioned, they aren't yet at commercial scale. Of course, they're still early stages in their development, but it's conceivable to think that in the foreseeable future over the next decade and beyond that we start to see alternative technologies. And so that's gonna be fascinating to see how that affects demand for graphites, as well as of course, other different raw materials within the lithium ion battery supply chain. And then on the natural versus synthetic discussion, I think the underlying message from most economists and forecasters seems to be that we're going to need to see a rapid uplift in production on both the natural and synthetic side. It's been interesting that synthetic has been initially preferred for some different types of use cases, but there are forecasts that suggest that natural will grow in share moving forward. It's worth noting that natural is cheaper, but it's also more environmentally friendly. Synthetic graphite is obviously manufactured through a power intensive process and it requires needle coke as well, which is a byproduct of the oil refining process. There is a lot of considerations. It's a fascinating market. I'd be keen to hear your thoughts. So drop in a comment below. I've looked into a range of different EV battery materials sectors over this past period. So we'll leave links to those up above that you can check out too. It's clear that the electric vehicle demand and transition is here. Of course, the raw materials that go into the batteries to fuel that are gonna to continue to grow in demand. So it's gonna be a very interesting one to see how graphite plays out with this evolving space. As you guys know, I'm just a bloke on the internet who likes talking about the markets. I'm not a financial advisor. None of the discussions financial advice. I do hope it's an interesting discussion for you, however, as a starting spot for you to do your own research from. A big thank you for joining us. We'll see you on a new video soon. For now, stay well and happy investing.